Any feelings for how individual legislators stand on it? Are they given any sort of public inclination whatsoever? Uh, well, in the House, we have, I think, about seven out of the 13 members of the Judiciary Committee are co-signers for the bill. So that's very encouraging. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we have some co-signers on the Judiciary Committee in the Senate as well. Um, it's, you know, it's it seems like we have a good shot at getting uh, a majority of votes. The the issue is making sure it comes up for a vote. Um, and and that has that's what stopped the bill in previous years. Um, but I think this year is much different. I think there's a very good chance that it will be voted on. The success of Colorado, um, how actively is the... that came out of Go Local Prob that was looking at the $2 million that Colorado uh, raised in tax revenue in January. And some people were saying, oh, this is much lower than we expected. And that's that's actually to be expected because they're in their ramp up period. Um, the governor and the regulators there still expect over $100 million in revenue this year. So we're, we're looking to that. We're looking to basically the, the non-sky falling. I mean, nothing, nothing really terrible has happened. There's some data to suggest that uh, use may have actually gone down. Uh, so so far this year. Um, so again, you know, basically seeing it go smoothly, which it has been, uh, and using that as uh, a way to respond to the sort of fear tactics that we hear so frequently from our opponents. What, um, what would you encourage? And one of the things we talked about running into the show was you providing us with some type of pro forma, um, a, a list for our uh, our blog, which is at www.coalitionradio.us, um, sort of a list of who to call. I mean, who, if, if you know, if you were the average listener of our show and you're clearly in favor of legalization. Who are the first two people you would think to call in the well, state? Yeah, I think I think everyone should talk to their to their own uh, legislators because even if they are supportive of the bill, it helps them to know that their constituents support what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So I, I recommend you know call your senator, call your representative, and then beyond that, I, I would say call the legislative leadership. So Senate President Piva Weed and and Speaker Fox. Those are the two we need to that we basically need their permission to have have the vote in the first place. Yeah, you see, with the court order the way it is, I'm not allowed to call my legislator. <laughs> <laughs> she lives two blocks away from me, so there's that whole sticky issue of how I get to work. Hey, I, I, I recently I recently moved, which means I have a whole new group of people to bird dog. Ooh, that's what they don't know you yet. Oh, oh they, they will. will. <laughs> we, we need to, we're taking bets now as to how long it takes before the restraining order. Right. I, well, well, clearly, and, and hopefully this won't be one of those hearings that they schedule either in the dead of night Although, though, actually, that might work because that's when most of us are up. Um, <laughs> but um, hopefully this will be one of those hearings where we're given some notice. Every Rhode Islander has a stake in this. Every Rhode Islander who believes in liberty, this is one of those must-go hearings. You know, the, 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 some of the mainstream, like, like I said, I call them the reefer madness crowd, will dismiss this as, since it's not in the mantra of economic development, that it should be pushed aside. Um, Listen, I mean, when you look at some of the legislation that our current GA is, is, is stumbling over, including the ultrasound bill from Lady Macbeth, including the, if my husband dumps me, I'm, he's got to pay for college bill from Lady Macbeth. I mean, when you look at that type of, you know, the Calamari legislation, this is something that has a significant impact both on the, the future of Rhode Islanders' independence as well as a positive impact on the fiscal situation in Rhode Island. Um, so... Hopefully, you're going to give us some heads up on that. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully, in the next within the week, we'll have a uh, we'll call it a user's guide to helping pass marijuana reform legislation here in the state, uh, so that we can put out to people, so people can send an email, maybe make a phone call, take five minutes from your day, and just start to get involved. And maybe this will be the spur that people need to get involved in other critical issues in day to day. Um, what you're feeling right now, you know, last time we put you on the spot and asked for a sort of a if you're a betting man. Um, what do you think? What are, what are the odds? Yeah, I'm actually a little more encouraged now than I was last time. And I think it's because you folks have been looking at this revenue we're losing from uh, from the gaming and from the casinos. And, uh, you know, the legislature is wondering where they're going to make up that money. And, you know, the, the sort of cynicism on the other side is, oh, you know, they're just doing this because they want money. But that's absolutely not the case. You know, there's there's lots of good reasons to do this. And so I think more and more, you know, we're seeing that the opposition just doesn't have a good reason not to let this move forward. And uh, the momentum's continuing to build.
build. So, um, you know, I can't put an exact uh, percentage on it, but I would say a pretty good shot. Super. And if for some reason, I won't judge, but if for some reason anybody listening out there in Rhode Island is not like PO and I and is not on first name basis with their rep or they don't know how to contact leadership, you can go to sos.ri.gov. And that doesn't stand for save our ship. That stands for the Secretary of State's office. So it's actually fairly easy. You go to sos.ri.gov. You put in uh, where you live, you know, how you're registered to vote, and you will get a full bevy of contact information for how to get a hold of your representation. Well, Jared, again, thank you for coming in. Um, we hope to hear from you again in the coming week. And uh, we eagerly await, eagerly, <laughs> the announcement of uh, from the aptly named Senator Weed um, <laughs> <laughs> of, of the next year. If nothing else, maybe this will help her put an end to all the weed jokes. <laughs> not sure, but I'm not allowed to ask her that either. So, <laughs> that, right. That's a legacy I would be proud of. Right? If I were her, so. <laughs> well, thanks so much for having me, and I'll definitely keep you guys posted. All right, buddy. We'll see you soon. All right. So we're going to take our break early, but before that, we're going to switch gears, or I should say after that, we're going to switch gears. So P.O., let us know how we will be switching gears. Well, we've got a special guest in today. Uh, one of the fun things about hosting a radio show is that the three of us, we get to have people in that we're really interested in talking to. Larry it, Flint wouldn't show up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, neither would any of the Ramones. So, it, But what's great about it is, is that since we're force-fed by the lamestream media, the usual talking heads, the usual pablum, we get to say, you know, this is independent radio. Radio. This is this is what people want to hear, and, and it's, in, in a large sense, since we're doing it ourselves, we're kind of you know we're a little uh, possessive here. We want to hear what we want to hear. So one of the one, one of the pride and joys of this show is that we bring people on to give them a forum who are usually. I don't know, uh, not given free reign in the general media. So today I am honored to have a talk radio legend, uh, Joe Bernstein, on the air. Um, <laughs> Mr. Bernstein just rolled his eyes at us. <laughs> <laughs> well, a legend for a couple of reasons. Joe, if you've ever listened to conservative talk radio, Joe is a, a light, has retired from being a lifetime INS agent, has a wealth of experience both in immigration and general law, uh, has worked the streets of the Northeast and actually the Midwest for a lifetime. So it's it's sort of our snapshot into the real deal, the, the real machinations behind immigration. All right. On top of that, he offers us a real perspective on what's going on because in his retired life, not only do you hear him calling on the radio, but he actually actively attends General Assembly hearings and you know, takes that real life perspective. Uh, so I, I am thrilled to have Joe on the air. Uh, he's going to be joining us right after the break. And uh, Tony, again, throughout the Twitter feed, because I know some of our listeners will want to ask some questions. We do have folks checking in on Twitter now throughout the night at coalition underscore radio. And of course, facebook.com slash the coalition radio. And the old go to coalition radio dot us will have more after the break. Manchester 65 is New England's newest live music and events venue. If you're not completely enjoying your current live music experience, there is another option. Manchester 65 is large enough to support touring acts, yet small enough for that local feel. For upcoming events, go to Manchester65.com. Make it your place. Manchester65.com Liberty loving freedom fighters join us for Liberty Love Fest 4 an evening of live music arts, education and trade potluck social with liberty minded people from New England and beyond April 5th at St. Joseph's Church Hall in Cumberland, Rhode Island details on the web at libertylovefest.org that's libertylovefest.org ProvidenceNightOut.com is a one-stop destination website where you'll discover a comprehensive guide of everything that the Providence area has to offer. Nightlife, entertainment, dining and dancing, community and family events, and so much more. Download the free app called My Night Out. It's ProvidenceNightOut.com. Hey everybody, it's Tony Jones. You know, when I'm not here yakking about politics, I spin records.
expected it to be, then tune in to The Tony Jones Show. The information's online at TonyJones.org. That's TonyJones.org. This portion of the coalition brought to you by Manchester 65 for upcoming events. Manchester 65. Dot com And, of course, we are just a mere weeks away at, from the event that P.O. Taxpayer will be speaking at. Liberty Love Fest is coming up. LibertyLoveFest.org. I hope to see you there. St. Joseph's Church, Menden Road in Cumberland. It's going to be quite the night. Uh, rock and roll, good food. Lots of speeches, at least one or two people bloviating and pontificating. <laughs> That's my job, right? Uh, we are taking up a collection you, to get the P.O. taxpayer a teleprompter. So, uh, donate you, now. You want people to attend this, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yes. well, okay. you know, it, it's a good time if I need to get served as well. well um, <laughs> he- heckling is encouraged, so if you, right. uh, if you want to come and participate in this, by all means. Yeah, just uh, verbal Molotov cocktails. Are, <laughs> yes, are, yeah, are, please, no, no actual weapons, please. Are just fine. Well... Again, let me just, before the break, I introduce Joe Bernstein, lifetime INS agent, lifetime rack. Also, I tease him because he's actually given a lot of leeway on local talk radio. But by definition, the nature of talk radio is such that you speak in sound bites. Uh, you've got to fit in with the theme of the moment. And very often the host talks over you. This, to me, the great part of our show is that as an outrage porn free zone, as someone who wants to feature the guests as opposed to the host, we give Joe sort of an open mic to discuss what he wants. Joe, welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell, uh, give, give us the backstory on Joe Bernstein. I mean, uh, tell us how you got to this point. Very briefly. Uh, I'm going to be 68 this year. So, you know, I was a baby boomer. I, uh, I served in the U.S. military for four and a half years in active duty. I was in Vietnam in 68 and 69. Uh, got out of the service in 71. And I became a New York State court officer. I took a civil service exam, which is kind of like a deputy sheriff here. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I went back to school. I got a bachelor of science degree in criminal justice from New York, which is uh, one of the uh, pioneering schools in that field. It's part of the City University. And uh, 1976, actually 38 years ago today, I was sworn in uh, to the U.S. Border Patrol. I changed from state to federal law enforcement. Happy anniversary. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and. I- uh, <clears throat> I started off at the El Centro sector in California. Uh, After the academy, about 15 members of my class were given the option to go to investigations, which is what I did. So a few months later, I was reassigned to Chicago, and I spent about eight years in Chicago. Um, I was assigned to the area control squad for about four years, and that was uh, four, four and a half years. That was a labor-intensive unit. Uh, We had... 23 agents, and we were averaging 1,000, 1,500 arrests a month. You can do the math on that. Uh, we didn't have much time off. And then I uh, I spent some time in another unit that uh, concentrated on fugitives and on frauds. And then I spent a couple of years in the uh, <clears throat> anti-smuggling unit, which nowadays uh, euphemistically is called human trafficking. But back then we just called it what it was. And uh, then I transferred to Rhode Island. I spent about three years on alien criminal apprehension and uh, basically looking for people in the uh, area, in the state of Rhode Island, in uh, part of the time in Bristol County, uh, uh, Massachusetts, who were involved in criminality, who had been various crimes. And then uh, I spent my last nine years in operations, concentrating on uh, illegal aliens and uh, resident aliens who are involved in the uh, drug trade. <clears throat> so you've worked at arguably some of the real hot spots in American interdiction, I'll call it, across a variety of disciplines. Yeah, you could say that, yeah. And um, one thing I, I've noticed is that in these discussions of immigration, the general public 
is dependent upon either politicians or the media to get the definitions 